Ceramic Dagger is disgusting, making level 9k enemies feel like paper. Wait, Nightmare Frame, how are you able to cover three incarnate weapons in one week? Well, stay tuned and find out. Close your eyes. What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a Ceramic Dagger Incarnate build and review. This video was made possible thanks to the amazing collaboration with XXF, the infamous Eidolon speedrunner. He was there to provide video and additional testing as we were in that Discord call for quite a hot minute. Totally not doing anything naughty, I swear to god. This weapon has an interesting gimmick, where when you heavy attack from a distance, you send out two projectiles that are spectral forms of your daggers that deal damage on impact and produce a 5 meter AoE explosion. On direct hit, the projectiles deal IPS damage, while the explosions deal heat damage with a forced impact proc. And this AoE explosion has fall off damage, and it doesn't scale with range mods. The projectile can headshot, but does not have a headshot damage multiplier. And yes, the explosions unfortunately stagger you. Since you shoot out two projectiles, you can steer the second one to hit something else. However, the second projectile will snapshot the buffs of the active state on your weapon. What, what does that mean? Meaning, when you heavy attack, both projectiles will have the current modified damage, but if the first one hits a target while the second one is still traveling, the second projectile will lose the previous buffs and will be modified by the current state of the weapon. Meaning, if your combo is at two times after the first projectile hits, the second projectile will inherit the state of the weapon in its two times combo states. Hopefully you understand that. The projectiles do not scale off regular base damage mods and arcanes, but of course is affected by the modified base damage from the perks and incarnate activation and universal base damage buffs, like Vigorous Swamp, Arcane Arachne, and base damage abilities. However, Condition Overload is quite weird, because Condition Overload will affect the projectiles which will scale multiplicatively with your universal base damage modifiers only on direct hits and not the AoE. And this build is heavily focused on direct damage with your projectiles. Alright, let's take a look at the Incarnate Evolutions, just to see what we have picked for this loadout. The first evolution is of course activating it and you get the additional perks. Evo 2, Gun and Blade, get a 100 bonus damage, and when you kill with your primary, you get plus 1 initial combo, which stacks up to 100 times. This buff will last forever unless you fully die or force res. Very useful if you're in a long mission, as you can easily achieve these 100 kills, and since this loadout is focused on endurance, this is the best first choice. Evo 3 are all utility ones, but we went with Adept Reflexes for the additional 20 initial combo. You can run heavy attack efficiency to fully replenish to 7 times combo instantly if you're going for a heavy attack spam build. However, what we found out is just better to focus on better multipliers as it isn't a problem if you're in a long mission, priming enemies to then deal damage or with some moderate downtime, as it takes 3.92 seconds for your combo counter to go back to 7 times initial combo after a heavy attack. So then again, it's personal preference. And now onto EVO 4, Absolute Units. DE did a typo here, I don't know what they were thinking. This gives you a juicy 30% crit chance increase before mods. And this is how we're able to get red crits without even reaching 12 times combo. For the helmet, we'll be using Eclipse. This is another multiplier where it will provide you a final weapon damage multiplier, which is an even bigger damage boost. And the choice of frames for this run can either be Ash, Nyx, or Steinex. Ash provides you with a more chilled and relaxed approach as you can go invisible and not worry too much on other bonuses like range, meaning when you're modding him, you can go hard on duration and strength. Alright, let's take a look at the builds. Starting off with the Ash build. I do have one Archon Shard to give me 10% additional duration. That's it. You can add two yellow shards for casting speed, otherwise this is all you need. 
in the aura. As you can see, I have swift momentum with a six seconds combo duration and we get 30% heavy attack wind up speed. PSF because spending less time in your butts is a huge DPS increase. Ability strength is at 243% with blind rage and umbral intensify. Duration at 209% thanks to the Archon Shard and Narrow Minded. Seeking Shuriken for the armor strip, Prime Flow for the energy pool, and Equilibrium for the orb pickup conversion. Vigorous Swamp and Arcane Arachne are going to be my universal base damage buffs, which will affect the projectiles from Ceramic Dagger. And then the other arcane is up to you. And now onto the Ceramic Dagger build. Condition Overload is not going to be a base damage multiplier, but another multiplier on the projectiles. But when you're using this as a regular melee, Condition Overload will function as a base damage. Crit damage here with Organ Shatter and Gladiator Might. Crit chance with Sacrificial Steel and Blood Rush. And of course, a faction damage mod for another damage multiplier. The elemental combo here can switch depending on what you're using it on. Corrosive was used as it's very good to one-shot Acolytes and it's neutral damage against armor stripped enemies. However, if you really want to hard focus on armor stripped enemies, Viral is the way to go. But of course, due to polarity problems, this is what we have. And as you can see, it still was able to one-shot those Demolists. And to debuff and prime enemies so our melee can deal more damage, we have the Epitaph modded for Viral and Heat, and it force procs Cold, Blast, and IPS. All right, folks, that is the Ceramic Dagger versus level 9,999. Thanks to Double for helping collaborate with this video. And if you want to see the other incarnate weapons, you can go check out the playlist on the top right. Anyway, for those who've learned something and enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.